welcome the delegation from the export development Canada. Uh, we have with us uh, today Mr. Peter Paul, who is the Vice President and the uh, Chief, uh, Economic, uh, Chief Economist for PC. Uh, we have Mr. Michael Abhimal, who is the Regional Manager, uh, and Ms. Nina Sukumanil, who is the Associate Regional Manager at PC. So, uh, I do have a fair deal, and we send a very warm welcome to Allow me to introduce the Export Development uh, Canada a little bit. It is the Export Credit Agency and it offers financing, insurance and risk management solutions to help Canadian exporters and buyers of Canadian goods and services. It is a, in a representative capacity, EDC is located at the Canadian High Commission in New Delhi and at the Canadian Isolated Mumbai. And as I mentioned just now, uh, Mr. Peter Hall is the Vice President and the Chief Economist for EDC. Uh, and it's a privilege for us to have him here today. Uh, a little bit about him. He has over 20 years of experience in domestic and international economic finances and forecasting. Uh, he is responsible for overseeing economic and political risk analysis at EDC. In addition to advising senior management at Mr. Hall is a featured speaker at conferences across the country and regularly speaks on television. Uh, prior to joining EDC, Mr. Hall directed the economic forecasting activities of the Conference Board of Canada. He also served on the economic forecasting staff of the major Canadian utility. Mr. Hall has served as a member of roundtables on the economies of the Eurozone and the Asia Pacific region. He has degrees in economics from Carleton University and the University of Toronto. Uh, today uh, he is amongst us and he's going to be speaking on where the world economy is headed in the coming, world, coming months and how he sees uh, are the implications for India of the world economy. I think it's a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to be listening to him. I was just speaking to Professor Sanilasha a while ago and uh, talking that uh, it's going to be it's something that you talked about in your classes, right? You've been talking about the world economy and we also talked about implications for India. Yes. And it's something that you always talk about. But I'm sure coming from him and getting the perspective would be very interesting to say that somebody who's coming from outside of India uh, might just be able to look at facts in a different way, might just be able to tell us things as to how somebody else would look at it. And I think the different perspective such a huge value addition. So we really look forward to hearing you uh, this morning. Thank you so much for coming. With that, I hope you the best.
I am most excited about the future of India. Now many others say the same thing as well. And you might think, well, that's a nice thing to say, and that's probably a polite thing to say while I am here. Uh, I would get in a lot of trouble in Ottawa for saying that because, of course, Ottawa has the embassies of every nation in the world that we do business with, and all of them except the High Commission of India would be very annoyed with me for choosing a favorite. So let's please keep that between ourselves, although I guess it's going to be all over YouTube and that other things. <laughs> I am uh, very excited about the, uh, the Indian economy and uh, yet quite apart from my own feelings, and I have good reasons for having these feelings, um, India, more importantly, has caught the attention of my country. Uh, we are doing extensive negotiations with uh, the Indian government at the moment on something called the SIPRA, the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Uh, my government has uh, put this it's a high priority for them. We are working on three major trade agreements at the moment, as far as I'm aware. One is with the EU. Uh, another is the very recent invitation that we have received at the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And we have now completed five rounds of negotiation on the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement with India. And our government is very intent on inking that deal sometime in 2013. We're not sure if that's actually going to happen, uh, but there is a tremendous amount of momentum and a tremendous amount of excitement about the possibility of that. So round five of the talks was completed in July, and those talks are ongoing, and, uh, and uh, there is a tre tremendous amount of momentum in those, uh, both of those talks. Well, not only has India caught the attention of my country, but it's caught the attention of our company. We have a corporate plan that has to be uh, approved by the government every year. And we have three main uh, strat strategic objectives in terms of accomplishments that we want to make in different fields. And of those three, one of those is India. So not only have I told you that this is my most exciting economy in the world, but it's the only economy that gets mentioned inside of Export Development Canada's corporate plan. So there's a huge commitment uh, at the government level and at our corporation level, all surrounding the Indian economy. My group at EDC is responsible for doing economic and political risk analysis. So we analyze the entire world. We're responsible for creating economic information that we impart to our corporation for the corporate plan to Canadian exporters around the country. And uh, we are also uh, responsible for doing risk ratings of those countries that inform our own transaction process. So we're very tied in to the actual business transaction process. Not every transaction, but ones that involve uh, ratings, best ratings for the country and for corporate uh, ratings inside of the country when those are relevant. So we're very tied into this process as well. It's, again, very dangerous for us to pick favorites, but we are very excited as well as a team about the Indian economy. Why all of this excitement? Well, one might look at the Indian economy at the moment and say, maybe there's not a whole lot to be excited about. Uh, this nascent downturn that has hit the Indian economy is causing a lot of worry. It's causing a lot of worry amongst Canadian exports. In fact, it's not just concerning India, it's concerning the large emerging markets in general because they have been decelerating in terms of these aggressive growth rates and that deceleration has been synchronized. So that has led to fears among the business community who don't have time to do the deep analysis of these countries that there is something systemically wrong with the world economy that's affecting emerging markets. Well, what I tell them out on the road is, these downturns may be synchronized, but they're happening for very different reasons. So with that as a bit of context, I don't think I can say anything more about the Indian economy before I give you impressions of where we think the world economy is at at the moment. Now, there are many opinions 
about the world economy. I'm sure you've debated them, and you've heard eminent scholars talk about what's going on in the world economy. So I'm one voice among many uh, that has a perspective on the world economy. And yet, I will say that our forecasting accuracy record over this very tumultuous period of time has, uh, been, has been quite good. So every economist is going to tell you that in retrospect. You know, I got it all right. Uh, and I, I'm not trying to sound, it's very uncharacteristic actually for a Canadian to brag about uh, what it's do. We're usually very quiet people. So I'm only saying that to lend some credence to the story that I'm going to tell you about now. Because as a forecaster, you mind if I step out from behind you? As a forecaster, I, I believe that it's almost impossible to tell where the world economy is going to go if you don't understand where the world economy has come from and where it is right now. Those are two fundamental building blocks. If you don't know what your stepping off point is in the forecast, then as far as I'm concerned, you don't have any credibility behind that forecast. And so I drill that into my staff. You've got to be absolutely sure where it is that you're standing at point in time. So what is this story that the world economy has gone through? Am I messing things up for the camera here or can you follow me around? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. What is, what is the story that, uh, that, has, that the, the world economy has gone through in the last while? Well, I believe it's best described in a number of unprecedented events that the world economy has lived through. Let's think about the last growth cycle that we were through. It was 16 years long by my calculations. Now, a normal growth period in the world economy would be eight years. So that was double the length of a normal cycle. So that sounds like a good thing. But in any normal cycle, any eight-year cycle, you would have a buildup of excesses at the end of that cycle. You get a bit of irrational exuberance that takes over the economy. Somebody comes along and says, well, after six years of growth or so, it's different this time. You heard that before? It's a new economy. It's a new normal out there. And it causes us to lower our risk threshold and to undertake uh, excessive behavior that we would not normally do. We're feeling very good about all of this growth that's behind us, and so we take extra risks. But when you have a 16-year cycle, you don't just get double the amount of excess. Those excesses grow exponentially. So the world economy saw a five-year period of time right at the end of that growth cycle where we were in pure excess. Now, what was different about the buildup of excess this time was it was not localized. Because over that 16-year period of time, there was an exponential growth in globalization. Now, what did that globalization do? It took a consumption excess in one country and made it a production excess in other countries. So an American excess de facto became a Chinese excess. And everybody participated in this excess. Well, if that's an unprecedented event, I think our count is up to three unprecedented events. The first is the length of the cycle. The second is the unprecedented buildup of excess. The third is the fact that that was exported everywhere. The fourth unprecedented, at least in our time, was the correction that came about as a result of that excess, the largest drop in global output that we had seen since the Great Depression. Well. What's unique about that tumble in activity is we never react very well to a drop in global activity. But we've had these cycles for long enough that you know we've gotten used to them. Except when you have a 16-year growth cycle, that's a large part of anybody's career, 16 years. So many have entered the world economy, let's say at the near end of that, and all they have known for 16 years or 15 